Hello, welcome back, nice to see you. Today is a video for recent finds. Number three, my third one. Um, and I think I may have missed things, but that's okay. Um, I'll just keep going. So I have a few things to show you, um, and let's get started. The first is, I should say, uh, an online record store that's based in the city um, had a pop-up that was announced on social media, and it turns out that the pop-up was uh, like a five or ten minute walk from my house so I dragged the kids over and had a look um, the weirdest thing to me was that they had things alphabetized very strangely so for example Bob Dylan was under B Tom Petty was under T which drives me crazy that is not, not the way you should alphabetize in my opinion however I did pick up a few a couple things there and uh, the first was Doors 13 from I guess this was originally 1972 and um, it was the first compilation, I think the first compilation, or the only compilation that was released during uh, Jim Morrison's life. And this was uh, it's called 13 because it has 13 tracks. This is a later Canadian pressing, I don't know the year. And um, uh, it's pretty good. It has the things you'd expect on here, Light My Fire, People Are Strange, it goes on. So it's, it's not bad. Uh, and it was $4 and it was in really good shape. So I couldn't turn that down. And uh, right next to it was this one, which is uh, Weird Scenes Inside the Gold Mine, which is uh, a line from the end. And this one was $8, double record. This was the, I guess it was the uh, the first comp after after Jim Morrison's death. Um, I think 1972, I, I might get that wrong. But um, again, it was $8, it's in good shape. So I don't understand why it was so cheap, but there you go. Uh, the next thing I picked up, um, New is this record, which I mentioned in a different video. It's Father John Misty, also known as Joshua Tillman or Jay Tillman. This is called Chloe in the, ne Chloe in the Next 20th Century. Um, yeah, I would say that this is a bit of a change in, in sound for him. I mean, he's typically described as indie rock, folk rock, even soft rock, chamber rock, sometimes country. But uh, this one is a, I guess you would call it... Um, maybe big band or something it's it's jazzy jazzy pop it's a little different first i should tell you that it's on um double blue blue vinyl with really interesting custom labels which are upside down but um so i i don't know it's um a little different uh, i wasn't i heard a couple of singles saw a couple of videos before this came out and I wasn't really sure if I liked it. It has a different sound, and not all the, not all the uh, reviews have been positive. Um, this is the insert. Oops. Insert here. Um, yeah, it's it's a, it's different. It's a quite a different change. It's quite a different sound. Um, I really like this first four records. This is his fifth one from came out on April eighth. You know, I, I like it. It is it. I guess um, somebody mentioned it's a little too close to Harry Nilsson's uh, touch of a uh, touch of Smilson and Schmilson in the night, and other people have uh, compared it to a Randy Newman's Sail Away record. So that might be true. I don't know those records very well. Um, so I would recommend the first four records. If this one, maybe. If you like that stuff, maybe. But it's a it's a little different, and um, yeah, it might have, might be one of those records that that grows on me. The next thing I picked up was uh, the new record that came out in April again this year. It's the third record from Fontaine's DC called Skinty Fia. Now, that's in, in Irish. Apparently, this is an Irish uh, saying that substitutes for a swear word. So you'd say Skinty Fia, or however, however you pronounce that. And it, um, it translates to the damnation of the deer. <laughs> that's all I know about it. Um, again, this is a record that got mixed reviews. I love the first two Fontaine's DC's records, and I think they're great. Uh, this one might also be a record that maybe will grow on me. It, it, it has some good stuff, and I, I do like it. It's um, uh, Maybe it'll take a while to, if I because I don't immediately love it as much as the first two. Um, anyway, um, somebody, I read somewhere someone called it monotone and boring, but uh, this is a post-punk band, so you know they have influences from some of that 80s sound. Um, and I guess some of the songs are about uh, what it's like being an Irish person living in London, which apparently is not always easy. So um, that's an interesting record. The next thing I'm going to show is a, a record that it was a bit of a surprise to me because I was using up a, uh, a gift card on Amazon, and the package came, 
And I opened it up and the wrong record was inside. Um, so I contacted Amazon and they said, uh, we'll send you the, the right mm -hmm. thing. You can, you can keep that one or give it away or whatever you want to it, whatever you want to do with it. So this is a record I have never, I've never heard of this person before. Her name is Jenny Haval, H-V-A-L. There's an EP called The Long Sleep. There are only uh, four tracks on here. So I had to look her up. She's a Norwegian singer, songwriter. And I did listen to one of these tracks on YouTube, but I haven't played this record yet, so I don't really know anything about it. Um, that's the label there. It's just black vinyl. But when I was uh, researching her briefly, I didn't do a lot of research, um, I noted that her previous full-length record in 2016, this is from 2018, by the way, uh, her full-length record from 2018 is called um, Blood Bitch. And apparently it's a concept album about vampires, menstruation, and 1970s horror films, which to me sounds kind of fantastic. And I just noted some of the song titles on that record. There's a song called In the Red... Uh, one called Female Vampire, one called Period Peace, and one called The Plague. So that might be the record to, to get, I don't know. But uh, we'll see what this is like. It has good reviews. Um, I don't know anything about her, though. And that's all I'll say about that. And it was free, so I'm not going to turn that down. The uh, next two things, there are two things that are from the, the same artist, and I have to mention Mike from uh, PC31, The Vana Policeman, because he's talked about this band and one of the one of the members in this band more than once and I kind of kept an internal kept a like a note in my brain about it in case I'd ever see anything by this band and I don't remember ever seeing anything by the band but I went into a kind of a, a strange record shop in in Toronto and was looking around and then I looked up on the wall and there were two things side by side from this band which is kind of unusual so this is um the fourth release called Shock of Daylight by The Sound a uh, UK post-punk band, um, you know, I guess started in the early 80s and were done by 1988. And sadly, the, the Adrian Borland, I guess the, the force behind this band, passed away a few years back. But I have to say, when I put this on, I mean, I, they were, by the way, they were never commercially successful, but the critics uh, really liked them. Um, the first, I guess, eight to ten seconds of the first track on here, Golden Soldiers. If you had told me that was a, <clears throat> a Smith song when it started, I might have believed it. Um, <clears throat> even the bass, the bass. I mean, the whole sound. If I, when I listened to this, I thought, wow, this is 19, this is mid-1980s, this is 1984. It just sounded like it to me. Um, and one of the things I was thinking about is just this regret that I didn't know the band back then because uh, they sound really interesting. Now, this one actually is a Canadian pressing. The... Um, first and third records from this band were not released in Canada. The second one was, so they'd be imports, I guess. And uh, this one, yeah, was released, uh, the only Canadian pressing for this one. Um, and again, I don't believe I've ever seen this, anything by this band in any, um, in any shop before. So this is the, the, so the fourth release, it's a, it's, I guess you call it a mini album because there's only six tracks, but again, I really, I really like them. So I think it's a really good, the second track, The Long Longest Days, I mean, when that started, I thought, you know, the bass player could have been Peter Hook. It sounded like that to me. So, um, yeah, interesting, interesting release. And right beside it, I almost missed it, <laughs> was a double live record called In the Hot House, In the Hot House from The Sound. Um, again, this was not released in Canada, so this is the first, first UK pressing of this record. So there is a track from the previous record on here and then a bunch of things I hadn't heard before because I didn't really know anything about this band. So it's weird, I think, probably to hear the live versions before you've heard the studio versions, but um, I've listened to this, I've listened to both of them uh, twice. And so I'm just sort of um, getting to know them a bit. But I guess my overall feeling is uh, thank you to PC31. Thank you to Mike for um, noting this, this band to me because um, I, I think it's really good. Now, um, finding the other ones might be challenging because um, they seem to be, even the represses seem to be out of print, so I haven't, I haven't seen them around, so I will keep my eyes open for those records. And just to round things out, a couple of um, soundtracks that I got super, super cheap. Uh, the first is Good Morning Vietnam, um, the Robin Williams film. And, you know, this has uh, songs from around the time, so there's Beach Boys on here, Martha Reeves, um, some things I'm not familiar with, uh, the Castaways, uh, Marvelettes, the Vogues, etc. So this was, um, 
yeah, super cheap and in perfect shape. So uh, I haven't played this yet, um, but I could hardly turn it down because the price was pretty, pretty incredible. And the second surprise, I guess this is a real surprise, is that I found this one sealed for a very good price, like almost nothing, <laughs> Rock and Roll High School. I've never seen this film. I have seen uh, Good Morning Vietnam. And, you know, the first half of this record is all is all Ramones, right? Um, and then Nick Lowe, and then there's a Brian Eno track. Side two, we have Devo and, you know, some other Brownsville Station, Chuck Berry, Alice Cooper, Todd Rundgren. So I opened it because it, it had been sealed, but... Um, I thought I would add that to my small soundtrack collection. So, all right, that's um, third installment of uh, recent finds. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great weekend. See you later.